What's up? What's up, everybody? It is episode 107 of Value Town. I'm Chan Man V, and we've got a whole slew of new people on the show today. Noxious isn't here today, guys. He's busy casting some TESPA, so he'll be back next week. But in place of Noxious, we've got this great group of folks here, Soddle and Raven. Actually, both of you guys over in Burbank, right? Getting ready to cast the, the winter prelims. Is that correct? It's um, Burbank, right? Tor Torrance, close enough. Yeah. Torrance? California. Oh, yeah, Torrance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So cool. So cool. To work in the <laughs> hotel rooms there. Good stuff. Good stuff. And then, uh, yeah, so welcome to the show, guys. You guys were actually, you guys were on like, a, actually saw it a couple weeks ago in the Raven, I think maybe one or one week or two weeks ago. Saddle three weeks ago, week Raven ago. two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys were Not so too good. long ago. <laughs> you guys were so good. Just had to have you on immediately after. <laughs> And then uh, joining the show for the first time, The Rat. Uh, I've been meaning to ask you for a while, though, and it's just like, uh, finally, it's just like, okay, this is the perfect time, just given that I've been watching <laughs> The Rat Rants forever now. So it's just like, okay, this is the perfect topic to, to have you on. So welcome to the show, buddy. Yeah, I'm excited to be on for the first time. Uh, yeah. I like myself a good discussion, so. Yeah, and I know I I'm, sometimes I don't give the best intro so the rat is a you know player a professional player and you're on team splice right like wearing the yep. shirt and everything right okay just making mm -hmm. sure making sure i don't give the give a no, shout sure. out to the wrong team there and then, <laughs> anyways we got a lot to talk about there's just obviously a huge couple of topics that are going on in the community so um you know we'll be talking about ben Broad's uh, post about the metagame and there's you know, various things he talked about there uh, Global Games was announced. Um, also, HCT Winter Prelims, obviously, are going on with those two. Starting off with the EU Prelims, but can talk a little bit about just the process of getting there, because obviously the rat uh, went through the process. Uh, and then we'll talk about Expansion Leagues. What's up with those Expansion Leagues? Uh, I think the uh, Hearthstone team keeps having, or at least whoever they, they tell or hire, just seems to have a, pro a hard time keeping it a secret. So... Um, well, we'll talk a little bit about what it's going to be soon. And then uh, introducing a new segment called Card of the Week. Figured instead of doing decks this week, we just talk about maybe one or two cards we think are um, not only interesting like we do in Mechator's Workshop where we actually come up with our own, but existing cards that aren't being played much but you know do have cool mechanics. And maybe one day, one day will be played if the power level ever came down for our stone. Uh, and then lastly, we'll have some Q&A with you, uh, a few email questions that you guys sent. And if you guys want to send some questions in for future weeks, go ahead and email those to valuetown at chainmanv.tv, and we'll get to them. Okay, guys, so let's just start off with the dessert right off the bat and, and talk about the, the Ben Broad post that happened actually right after the show. I believe it might have been Wednesday night or Thursday morning. So we just missed it last week. Uh, but Ben posted, uh, you know, one of the blue posts. And let me just show it to you real quick. And, you know, it wasn't really clear on what it was supposed to be about, to, to be honest, because there wasn't anything he was addressing, I think, immediately. So I think he was just generally addressing the, the negativity that's been going on just in the community and just about the meta. So starts off, you know, def defines a lot of terms, I guess he's going to be using, uh, or just like maybe some misconceptions as, you know, when you're using terms meta and balance. Um, but then he starts to go into a little bit more. So wanted to start off and get each of your takes on, um, what the general, I, I, how you interpret everything that he was saying and, and really what you think the general point of, of making this post was for him. So um, I'll start with you, Raven, and we'll kind of go around. Actually, okay. for you guys, it's kind of different. Uh oh, I think uh, Saddle's camera is a little bit messy. So <laughs> we'll start off with Raven here. Camera. We'll start off with Raven um, first. Yeah, go ahead. Sure, sure. So uh, first of all, I think it's like, you know, as you mentioned, uh, Bro Talk just, posted this not really anything like too crazily specific but um you know well worth doing and i think that we've had like already like a ton more communication yeah. already this mm -hmm. year than we have like all of last year which is kind of nuts um in terms of the post itself there's obviously a few pieces of, of the post but as a sort of starting generalization uh, it's mainly discussing how they look uh, at the meta and decide whether it's healthy or not and then work off what kind of changes that they Think they should do but it's really interesting to see how they approach it in terms of uh, you know like the average win rate of the best deck for example in the meta is the 53 percent is the one they use 
um, and how they look at it in general. But I, it's a really tough one because when they talk about uh, the meta to be like fun for players, fun is an extremely subjective thing. So it's really difficult for them to say, well, this is how we do it with numbers. If a class is 50% represented across ladder, well, that's just factually a problem, right? That's not what yeah. they want. They say they want variety overall. Um, and they want the players to go up against, you know, different decks, different, you know, uh, even different cards within those decks, essentially as well. Mm -hmm. But I think that, I think they're basically just, they're just trying to communicate more about like what they do on their side because it's what we don't know. Last year was like, yeah. well, how do, do you even think this is broken or needs to be looked at? No one knows because you don't talk to us. Whereas mm -hmm. this is just like, yeah, we're looking at things and here's a bit of an insight into how we do it. Whether how they do it, it is correct it is up for debate, but I think other than looking at statistics in terms of uh, the what the play percentages are across the various ranks on ladder, it's very difficult to do it any other way just because of how subjective right. like, fun is, right? Okay, yeah. Sada, what's your take on just how you interpret this post? Yeah, I think communication is the big word. I think um, that there's a certain element of, of damage control to it, right? Like the outrage <laughs> yeah. was getting to the point where it was going to be destructive if they didn't come out and say something. So, you know, they they said something. And as they usually do in, in times of great need, they roll out Ben Brode because Ben Brode is the most likable dude in the world. And when he says things, people generally listen. Poor ben. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I, I think like the, the communication thing is the big deal. And it's also... Um, like Raven said, they're, they're, they're trying to let us know that even if the the conclusions that they come up with do not necessarily agree with the popular opinions of the player base or of Reddit or whatever, they have metrics, they have systems, they have standards, they have uh, rules that they kind of apply the balance of their game to, and uh, they want to try and figure all that stuff out. And um, I think that, that was really important because we we didn't know any of that kind of stuff. We didn't know whether they balance the game on like a feel kind of thing or whether they actually used all this backend data that they have access to, um, to, to really nail stuff, stuff down. Of course, we suspected that that would be the responsible way to do it. And it would seem yeah. strange if they didn't, but it would, it would, it never like, they never came out and said that kind of thing. Um, so the mm -hmm. fact that, you know, they dumped all these statistics on us and they said, you know, we've been monitoring this all the way back since Undertaker Hunter, which was the most dominant deck ever at 60% or whatever it was um, up until now. Um, I think that's a big deal. And um, yeah, I, I think like if you break the two parts of that post, down, if you break that post down into two parts, it's kind of like 50% <laughs> damage control and 50% like genuine real information, mm -hmm. yeah. things that the community should know. Um, but I totally echo the point that Raven led with is that the great thing about it is we are getting communication of, of any kind. It's like that, that yeah. is an improvement because 2016 started off relatively well with the, the, like the developer insights videos that again, Ben was doing. But then they kind of uh, trailed off and we didn't really get anything for a long time. So yeah. I think, you know, and any communication is good communication. I'm happy to see it. Please give us much, much more. Yeah, the transparency is definitely great uh, and started with, the dev, you know, the, obviously the Dev Insight and now it's continuing. Um, a lot of the information here was actually said, at least some of the information with statistics was said in the in, you know, developer's insight. But I guess seeing it in, in, you know, writing or seeing it actually being posted is, is another thing that you can, it's a little bit more um concrete i guess you could say uh the rat what's your take yeah um i think it's tough for blizzard honestly uh it's kind of like you know it's a bit of a meme but you're kind of i think personally that they're kind of battling some alternative facts coming from the, the community <laughs> you hear a lot of like alternative oh stats. the game always <laughs> ends on turn four or um shaman is 60 percent of the games it's, it's got to be at least 100 or 80 percent of the games i'm playing against or um <laughs> i have to play a card every turn otherwise i just lose so trust me i play the games but then blizzard you know no surprise that they have access to this type of data given that the games are all played on a server and it would make yeah. complete sense that they can pull um a number of statistics that would be surprising um to players so they have all these statistics and uh, contrary to what some people think they aren't stupid and they can see um, no. that some of the things <laughs> that, that people are saying just aren't true. And it's tough to battle that mm -hmm. um, without um, releasing, you know, some stuff that they don't necessarily want to release that may reinforce um, things or without coming across as, um, you know, like 
attack on, on the attack or kind of aggressive yeah. towards uh, a certain streamer or a certain personality. Yeah. Um, Cause obviously you don't want to do that. Uh, like it's a company coming after an individual that never works well. So I think they're in a tough spot where you, and then people look at this post by Ben Brode and they'll say, Oh, he didn't really say much or, Oh, yeah. he kind of beats around the bush. Like always, they never say anything. And it's tough because if you come out and really like give some hard stats and you, you try to point out what people said that were and where they were wrong, um, then you start getting, you know, it's kind of like petty yeah, uh, almost in a sense. So, or you're getting specific uh, to certain, you know, exactly. Points and it's like being a mod on the subreddit. <laughs> I, I think, I think as well, like what one of the the weird things that like a lot of, and it's just people in general, and what like anyone would do in this situation, or a broad range of people anyway, is that they'll see a post, and they'll, although these stats are, you know, we presume factual, of course, um, they would, it's like you know, like the Fibonacci like control warrior thing to like when they said, oh, the control warrior was made. To beat that, Shaman, yeah. but, and it was like, oh, it doesn't even beat Shaman. But, and it's like, okay, it wasn't that he didn't mean it that specifically. He meant you can build a deck that beats, you know, that class on on average, or at least with a higher chance. And it was more of a a nod to how a, how a meta works, right. as opposed right. to go and play Fibonacci's deck and you'll win every game. You know, like <laughs> that's not quite what he what he aimed it. But it's just how people take everything. Is like it's why people yeah. are bothered. Where oh, he didn't particularly say anything specific. Well, he did. It's just not the stuff you want to hear. But that mm. doesn't make the stuff he said wrong or bad. Yeah, it's yeah. Like crazy. So, um, it's just it's... I feel like they could say if you ask you know random Reddit person what do you want to hear, he could say that. They go oh no that's wrong. It's it's, it's like, so <laughs> split. Yeah. So... Yeah, it's so it's so crazy. Ahead, it's a big it's a big part of the reason why like they don't want to talk to us or I imagine they don't want to talk to us because, you know, you can go back to last year where um, the big complaining point was like how bad Priest was and yeah, Priest was awful. And then Ben came out and made some offhanded comment before the release of Purify Unicorn. about, <laughs> right, right, but like that, that word was never used. Like he, he made some comments like we don't really think Priest has been fully explored yet. Maybe there's some other decks that will be pretty good. And then suddenly that turned into, oh, at Blizzard, in a safe somewhere, they've got like a golden sheet of paper with a priest deck list written on. That's it the exists. Best in the game. It exists. Like, no, no one ever said that. Like, why would they want to communicate with us? If anything they say, it just makes matters worse because idiots are just twisting it into something that fits their agenda. Like, yeah. They're, they, I, like, I completely agree with the rat. They're just in a terrible position because... Um, it's, you know, it's the community just wants to be negative towards everything they say. Yeah, I mean, it's it. You're right about that. Um, I mean, they're they're fixing all this stuff, so I don't really want to just harp on it. But you know, even if if they don't want to, they need they have to. You know, like they have to talk to us, even if they get get you know like, um totally lambashed by us. You know what I mean? It, it's it's still information like this kind of information could have come out before it's like i don't know why they didn't give it you know give it way way back so i'm not sure if that's just because you know ben's taking the reins now you know being director or whatnot and and maybe making some of these calls or you know they have just finally understood the message and starting to get this out more so i i think one of the issues might be as well is something that we've heard from blizzard multiple times is mm -hmm. that if you know something big happens i new expansion yeah. and then everyone was playing pirate warrior day one and you know if, if like a few days later or a week later blizzard are like oh we need to nerf this it, it's terrible or we need to do something about it then like a lot of the time there's these crazy decks come along that are super yeah. powerful but the whole point is we'll we'll give you time to actually work it out because people might just build a, an anti deck or anything or it might actually just even out a little bit as you know time goes on yeah. so they never really want to jump on anything too quickly and i kind of agree because i think the, the the part of the fun of the card of a card game is that you know to try and work something out and try and beat what your opponent's playing and like, yeah that's not a process that takes a day right so yeah. i would you know obviously i i do believe that they can be a bit slow on certain things but i do think it, a knee-jerk reaction to stuff isn't the correct way to go at least yeah so let, i guess let's let's start uh, talking a little bit about the meta because um, you know, they did come out with this and, um, you know, there were, there's always was already frustrations before this. So this comes out and to your point about damage control, you know, this was supposed to do a little bit of damage control, but I think in, in the end it's, I don't know if it's 
put gasoline into the fire, but definitely the frustrations are still out there. So um, let's kind of talk about that or let's address that a little bit. So, let, let, you know, in terms of the meta, what do you guys see as you know, as being the good aspects of the meta right now? And then what do you see as being a, a way for them to improve the meta to a point where, you know, a lot of the vocal community, you know, will be, uh, you know, somewhat placated or, or just satisfied to a degree because right now the vocal community, and it's become a meme. I mean, it's become just a circle jerk at this point on the, the subreddit. I mean, it was crazy clear when I think on Friday, you know, I did, you know, just, you know, my streamer showdown show, right. Which ended up going really well and it was doing well on Reddit. And there were like barely any comments in that thing. It was like number two on Reddit. And they were like, like, from folks that weren't myself in Vindexus, there were probably like 30 comments, okay, on something that had like almost a thousand points. And then you'd get, you know, you'd come over here, and there's just a circle jerk, you know, there's like like 10, 15 circle jerk threads that all have like hundreds and hundreds of comments, right? So clearly people do like to be, you know, just kind of jump onto this this kind of negative bandwagon or just like kind of you know, feel in that. So they want to really comment about it. So that's the sentiments right now. To, to kind of maybe change the the general uh, feelings of that, um, you know, it's probably has to do with the meta. So I kind of wanted to have us assess that first. So the good parts of the meta, the rat, like what do you think is the good part right now? I mean, personally, I love meta, uh, like the game right now. So I'm a little, I'm a little biased, but uh, really, you actually love that? Um, oh, really? I thought maybe yeah. you were. Uh, I mean, I disagree with like a lot of uh, the points that people make. Like one of the common memes is you either have Reno or you die, mm -hmm. and right. um, I've taken a look. Uh, personally at the vs stats they've given me some access to them and um i had the stats on one of my rants and you're actually 48 percent against agro shaman even when you don't play reno and that's a legend ladder in january so if you're 48 percent when you don't have or when you don't play reno clearly you don't just have reno or die you know and that's <laughs> that's kind of what i touched on right. before when right. i talked uh, just like five minutes ago people are saying that these things are existing and happening but they just aren't and it's so it's 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 funny when you look at the stats because you don't that's, you find out that's not actually the case. So why is there such a big disconnect between the reality and how players feel while playing the game? And I think that's where the real bulk of the conversation comes. People aren't having fun anymore, yeah. Regardless if if the meta is statistically good or bad, and if there is this, which I think there's a large variety of decks actually that are pretty um, good. Uh, obviously, Agro Shaman is the best at 53 uh, percent they don't say that but uh, it's agro shaman um there's only a few reasons left even that people could be so discontent and i've pretty much myself thought of two reasons why that could happen a um the frequency of card clusters like the pirate mm -hmm. package yeah. or like kazakis and reno um while they're, these might go in a few different decks, and I actually believe personally that the decks play much different. Um, I think that Pirate Warrior even plays significantly different than Aggro Shaman, and I even believe that Miracle Rogue plays significantly different than both of those decks. Um, you still see those Pirate cards o over and over again. And to uh, a certain extent, Reno Mage even plays much different than Reno Lock um, in the way that the games play out. So I think that even though there's a variety of decks, because you're seeing the same cards, people are upset. Also, because of um, the way that uh, the meta lines up with J Druid coming in and beating Control. If J Druid is enough of a percentage to deter Control, then it never takes over the aggro decks, <clears throat> and it can accomplish that even at even if the latter is only five percent mm -hmm. J Druid. Yeah. It'll it it affects the win rate of Mage by two percent. Okay. Um, overall, which would drop it below Shaman. So you see like a kind of a perfect mix where the meta is not allowed to be circular, so to speak. Right. So the the balance of like a lot of different classes and maybe archetypes might be in, in a good spot right now, or at least, you know, in terms of, meta, you know, we're talking about the meta here. It's kind of interesting you say that because, you know, I had 6-0 on Value Town last week and he, he said a little bit of the opposite where he felt like a lot of the decks, like Rogue, for instance, I mean, they play very similar. So... You know he's he's the guy that came with the flowchart, right? Basically, either Gazak, Gazak, or or a pirate pirate type of aggro deck, and um, it, it's kind of interesting to hear you know a different perspective from you. Uh, Sato, thoughts on just what's good in the meta right now? Um, first thing that's good about the meta is, I mean, th this isn't 
100% valid anymore because we're a long time since the last meta, but the, the number one thing that initially appealed to me about this meta is it was completely different about the, than the one before it. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, all, all the decks are different. A large part of the expansion, two-thirds of the expansion, the parts that didn't weren't involved with Grimy Goons, like, all kind of worked and naturally made new decks. They printed powerful cards, things changed. Uh, that was all sweet. Um, another good part of the meta is uh, something that um, Lorinda pointed out to me and I sort of went and vetted because Lorinda sometimes says things that are nonsense. So I, he, like, he, he comes out, he, like, he, Lorinda is he a does, strange he being. Does. He's a strange being in that he's incredibly statistics-based, fact-based, maths-based kind of guy. Mm -hmm. But then somehow he manages to twist that into complete nonsense sometimes. And I don't know how it happens. Um, but he told me that um, since the the real like aggro since aggro shaman had been like perfected and it was dictating the tournament meta that um, good players like the better players were getting further in tournaments than ever before people were winning and he was pointing at um, star ladder finals for example being essentially like a massive thousand player open tournament and then boiling down to the top eight top sixteen that you saw on that and talking about other majors as well and I went through. And it is essentially the case. Like the the the, res the tournament results right now are actually looking very very good for people mm -hmm. that we would commonly consider to be the strongest players. Um, so again, this perception of you know no skill. You just did you, did you draw a small time buccaneer on one, and did you like get enough damage before they drew Reno and played it? Like that perception of how games are being decided is just definitely not the case. And you can even see that when you you talk to high level players about the game where. Um, I remember Amnesiac, as, as negative as he is about the game, said that he's very, very happy playing Patches Mirrors. He thinks he can outplay his opponent in a game of Patches versus Patches. Um, perhaps even more so than Reno Lock versus Reno Lock, which is a game that he doesn't like. Yeah, whereas the, 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 co the common wisdom of, of the Reddit circle jerk is to say that the more expensive cards you have in your deck, the further you lean towards control, that just somehow makes it a more skillful deck by magic. <laughs> I, I I don't know I don't know the explanation. Solid, but, um, because the games last right, longer, so you exactly. have more right. turns, so you more, decisions. more decisions, more yeah. decisions. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, so yeah, I actually think the meta is skillful right now. I think it's dramatically different from the previous one. Um, but I do I echo the point of the rat that there's just something that kind of feels wrong about it to a lot of people. It just doesn't yeah. well, feel engaging, and I'm not I I don't not entirely sure what that is, and it's why I don't really envy anyone's position as a game designer of this game because I, I don't know how to like immediately change the feel like whatever abstract concept in the ether that is somewhere that would make reddit happy yeah. um because you, you could do what they said and just nerf every single aggro deck into the ground and make every game a 30 minute control versus control mirror i guarantee you that doesn't make the game feel better um well, people would get something... sick of that too so right and well then... there's, there's like something like an intangible that even the players themselves don't necessarily know what they want so. yeah that's kind of where we were at with the last format um uh, I talked to Jamin last night. I talked mm -hmm. about how there's two, the two most popular strategies. Like I just covered the, you know, the patches and the Reno and Kazakis. Um, patches with the pirates is an aggro deck. People just generally hate aggro decks. There's been a negative mentality towards aggro decks that in almost every card game forever. And um, and then Pat or Kazakis and Reno decks involve singletons. People hate the idea of drawing a card you have one of, even if it mathematically is likely at a certain point. They're like, wow, they only run one and they have it. And these two <laughs> concepts, even if they're balanced in the, in the math, are frustrating, I think, for players to play against. So how do you solve this? You make a mid-range meta. And they did that with <laughs> mid-shaman. <laughs> But people didn't like it either, so it's like oh, it's well, that's because so it was too strong <laughs> that's... to find. It's mid range time was overpowered. I mean... but it's, it's so hard to to find where yeah. people want to be um, at, and uh, I think that a, a solution to the meta and the complaints about the meta is just giving people more ways to play and experience Hearthstone besides playing on the ranked ladder. Yeah, uh, I, well, I think that and. You know, maybe they weren't that far off, to be honest, with the, you know, when, when mid-range Shaman became super crazy powerful and, and, and oppressive, you know, because it was probably the right decision to make a mid-range deck powerful. It's just they made the wrong class super powerful. You know, they could have chosen a different one. Um, but Raven, how, what are your thoughts just generally on what's good? 
Yeah, and it's sort of, you know, these guys have covered a lot of it, but I, I really enjoyed the the variety right off the bat, especially as a caster as well. You know, when you cast so, mm. so many games, talk, saying the same things over and over <laughs> yeah, again, yeah. Uh, you know, can can get a bit uh, a bit dull sometimes. But, like, there's so many uh, variations of, uh, well, so many decks available to most classes. Mm-hmm. Um, and even what, what I like the most is, even Shaman, although, you know, yes, it's, it's overpopulated at the moment, you know, it's too too like everywhere it's too good um but in general there are even so many variations within lists like so many versions of jade shaman so many versions of aggro you know even just in that and that that goes to the pirate warrior even jade druid has some variations and that's jade deck which you actually just search jade and dump in you know however many cards um so i i really enjoyed that and i actually played I, at one point i've had like six different pirate warrior decks built with just slight variances that you know try and work out what's best you same sick, with shaman same with a fair man. few other decks i am yeah <laughs> just wait till we talk about pirate warrior later on. um yeah I, I think that's like been really good and i don't think we've ever had an expansion that has completely like changed everything as much as gadgets had uh you know straight off the bat like from the day before the expansion to the day after it wasn't so much players just playing enhanced versions of decks they're yeah. just playing new decks like just straight off the bat and like so much changed it was really exciting but you know yeah. the shaman being everywhere is obviously the thing that's frustrating people the most i think yeah absolutely i just want to pick up quickly because shoop said in chat that like what he knows what he wants he wants a combo deck and i'm totally with him on that i, I think too. I think what would make me happy is another high skill cap awesome combo deck that did sweet things. Um, mm-hmm. But like, do I know that like after six months of playing a game that was dominated by that format that I wouldn't be back in the same feeling where I'm kind of jaded about it? Like, I I, I don't know. And that's well, kind of the point well, I'm trying to get at. Something well, that, you know, like, and, and we've talked about it a lot. I um, talked about it a lot of players, casters, whatever, quite a lot is, I think generally the, the main issue is people just want more content more often yeah that's that's a way to solve the problem yeah yeah Yeah. i mean that's what i mean because like if i said to anyone here's a really here's patron method back right Mm -hmm. play it for six months people are just gonna get bored it doesn't matter how much you you know okay you won't solve but you know what i mean (laughs) like i definitely (laughs) you're in bad company here (laughs) okay yeah that's true but but you get what i'm saying right it's stagnant something feels like it goes on for too long it doesn't matter how like fun people find it (laughs) No one wants to just sit and repeat over and over again. You just right. want either more cards in expansion or just like regular, you know, just even just boosts of cards now and again, even if they release a couple well, they of could new cards. They could just balance change. They could just change cards. Like... They could change cards too. And that, that could accomplish some of sure. that, you know, as well. But my, my, my only worry about that is like, would they, because I'm more on about like forcing changes in terms of method through new cards. If they did it through balance, would they, feel they need to change cards you know to like change things up as opposed to balancing they would be like well we should change things up a bit well, what can we change you know what can we nerf or both like, well the, the good thing about changing cards versus adding cards to change meta is that it's much easier it's much easier to have a, like an immediate impact if you change what's existing versus trying sure. to like you know like create a, some different movement over here that's going to you know uh, um to, to, to move past whatever the, the most powerful deck is. So it, it is a lot more um, you know, uh, just impactful if you do that. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that you're right, too. I think it's stagnant. I mean, when anything is too good for too long, and, and we, we don't, I don't know what that duration is yet. You know, six months is definitely too long. But is it three months? Is it two months? You know, I think that's something that Blizzard really needs to start evaluating like, and and they need to start. I feel like they have it figured that. out now. Do I, they? I don't even know. I think I this I was. I feel like this was the last part of that. Like I think we've mm-hmm. actually gone through the full rotation. Yeah, now. the year rotation. People yeah. will say shaman's been good for a long time, but it's interesting because all three shaman decks played very differently. Even the traditional aggro shaman, which we saw a year ago, plays much differently than the current aggro shaman yeah. deck. Um, but, and the mid range shaman in the middle plays differently. And I think that Blizzard's found out that it doesn't matter how the deck plays. If someone sees a Thrall, they're going to be pissed. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. a PR thing, too. You know what I mean? It, it's like, okay, it, it's not about the specifics. It's about just generally what people are feeling. And sometimes you have to make design decisions based on that in marketing. 
I mean, it, yeah. it doesn't well, sound great to the hardcore TTG players, but what, I think you should you know, consider that. What surprises me is that there's um because I kind of like adventures, but I feel like they shouldn't take a spot from an expansion. Yeah, I, I like totally a full agree. Card set. Yeah. And, and I think that for me, the the most straightforward thing would be every uh, competitive season has a full new expansion because for for the uh, I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure it doesn't line up like that. But if it has a full new expansion. On one hand, the players who, you know, the hardcore players or whatever, have that, you know, you play these cards for this season. There might be an adventure thrown in at some point, but here's the set. And then that road, you know, carries on as it goes throughout the year. And for the casuals, well, well, they don't care about time. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, they won't be yeah. like, no, I don't want it during the HTTC. They don't give a right, shit, you know? Right. So I think, like, if you just said, here's the season, it's like, you know, three months long or whatever. Boom, there's tons of cards. Enjoy. And then that season's over. Boom! Here's the here's the additional set of cards for season two, so on, so on, and then you can drop in adventures here and there because I really feel like for for a few cards, like the trickling of, of cards adventures provide, they're great, but they shouldn't be. Oh, we're going to release an expansion, then four months later, a few cards in an adventure, then four months yeah. later, an expansion. And you know, like that's just like crazy to me. I, I think this release, this coming release, is supposed to be an adventure. Right, like it's, uh, if, it's, it's if it's alternate. It's it's okay, it's definitely a set. Okay, good. They, it was, they, it was... they, they changed it so that it's expansion, adventure, expansion. Now that's yeah. their standard. Yeah. Okay. Career. Good. So we'll have a double expansion, which is, I mean, expansion and then expansion back to back, which is well, going to be great. They'd have to because we're losing sets, right? Yeah. Totally. <laughs> we lost the sets and put in like. <laughs> oh god, be terrible. Cards that's the last thing I didn't even yeah. consider. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I'd yeah. like more. I'd like more releases as well. I actually don't prefer balanced patches as ways to fix the game, but maybe that's just because I'm a traditional card game player and I played a lot of paper card games. Um, I think that if you do other things and release cards um, to counter other things, like there, there's ways to do it. Um, something that's really interesting about Hearthstone that people don't think about compared to other card games is that you can only do stuff on your turn essentially, and um, the game, uh, the way the mana system works is the resource. The resources aren't directly related to card advantage, um, in a in a, such a tangible way as playing lands and magic. Even in Yu-Gi-Oh, mm -hmm. you yeah. um, you don't have any magic, and every card is like a. It's almost like a. a it's it, that's the main resource thing, and even despite those two things, which I think most developers would consider limitations, uh, it's still the game's still not solved or figured out or. Yeah. Even though there's only like people say half the half the game or half the reason, you know what I mean? It's, mm -hmm. So I don't know. I, yeah, I know. I know what you mean by that. Um, why don't we talk about specifically the meta right now and why people aren't happy with it or what they're super sick of? Obviously, the pirate package we we've obviously covered uh, to at least some degree, and it's been talked about just ad nauseum. But want to see what other things? Is it like the jade, you know, mechanic? Um, you know, some of those kind of type of things. Saddle, we'll start with you. Start off with I you think, on this one. Um, I think the rat, I like nailed it a minute ago, honestly, is just people are just sick of, of looking at Thrall, Garrosh, and a little bit of Malfurion. Like, <laughs> that's that's just been the case. And, um, you know, per perception is is the big driving force here. Even if, you know, two months ago you were playing against a different Druid deck and a different Shaman deck and a different Warrior deck completely, the fact that those three classes are still the power classes makes the game makes the meta feel stale and it makes you makes you frustrated to keep playing you're not getting variety you don't feel like you're getting new experiences every time you queue up um and i'm not like a big historian of blizzard games or anything i, I literally never played a blizzard game before hearthstone but i know that historically blizzard balance is is take your turn balance right so they're happy yep. for yep. one class to be stronger than everything else at one given time. But then later on, they'll rotate it so that, that guy gets the little sword and then the you know, priest has the big sword. And then they go from there. The problem is, is just it's kind of just been warrior, shaman, druid, etc. Just been wielding the big swords for a very, very long time now. Like, when was the last time that priest, paladin, rogue... I mean, like, again, rogue is Rogue's pretty had good moments, right for sure. Yeah, rogue's pretty good right now and it's had moments. But, like, there are classes who have not had their turn to be that deck that's 25%, 30% of ladder or whatever for a very, very long time. And 
I think if Blizzard is going to stick to that philosophy of balance, which I imagine they are, because from what I know, it's been consistent through pretty much all of their games for a very long time, mm -hmm. then that's what they need to make sure is happening. They need to make sure that conveyor belt is actually rolling and it's not just rolling. It's not just one mini conveyor belt rolling up here between the top three <laughs> classes well, and then the other six rotating down here below it. Well, maybe it's been very difficult to do it. So I, I guess a question to kind of... Um you know, kind of to go off of what you were talking about there is, is that actually a good philosophy? Because, um, you know, part of me actually agrees with them. And it's like, you know, it's very hard to make nine classes completely balanced, right? I mean, I think yeah. that's completely unrealistic to even think that, that that can happen. I mean, if it does, that's like crazy, crazy things lining up. Uh, so actually, strategically, from a design standpoint, focusing on certain classes to, you know, just be the the focus and you know with new cards and whatnot i think is is generally the right way of doing it um yeah what do you guys think i mean rat i mean i don't know if you i think they already that. do that yeah they do so so the question is, 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 is that they a already good... do it this is something that people don't realize is actually happening in most games like um uh, there's the occasional like we didn't think this was going to be good and <laughs> yes. it was good but <laughs> for the most part that doesn't happen as much because in riots on record saying this with league of legends they design stuff to be slightly overpowered so that they know exactly what's going to be good so that they can predict what the problems that are going to occur mm, and that's, that's they have um, some power over it and i think that blizzard isn't um uh, naive to this as well um also when you say it's hard to balance nine classes I, it's funny to me because if i came from a, a large card game background and 53 percent win rate is 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 low it's extremely low <laughs> versus like eight other classes like if you look at the actual percentages and you see just how close they are to 50 percent and you really start you know thinking about it um in, in some different ways um you, you start to realize just how balanced the game is we we play so often in the we put in so many games are played that this extra three percent is really hammered out um it's it's really oh. known it's really felt and people are able to execute that three percent every time they play almost or whatever, you know, well, where in Magic the Gathering, um, so just to finish my point real yeah, quick, yeah. people will play decks that they think are good that might in reality only have 30% win rate, but they don't know because there's not millions of games being played on a ladder system to tell them that they're wrong. They could go to a tournament with a 35% win rate deck and they could just think it's good and they could even win the tournament because they could get lucky. Yeah. Um, and, they, and they could never even know that this deck was actually bad where in Hearthstone we find out very quickly just how good and bad things are. Yeah, so I don't you know I, I didn't play Magic and Magic so I'm not completely familiar with how, you know, the decks are um, maybe categorized and things like that. Uh, but is there something equivalent to, you know, like Hearthstone has classes, right? Like our decks right now are, you know, obviously partially categorized by class. I mean, they're constrained by class, by the hero power for sure and designed around, you know, these constraints. So um, does Magic have anything like that? Because I feel like it's a, it, it, I feel like it might be a little bit more of a, you know, an open environment than, than what we see in Hearthstone, where you know the classes are dictating that, which plays into design too. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you make Hunter? Like, how do you make Hunter not super powerful aggro deck? You know, and maybe change. How do you make a control Hunter right now? You know, that that sort of thing. One of the issues is that because. Um, in, in Magic and a lot of other card games that use, you know, roughly similar systems to define card set, yeah. is that uh, in, in a lot, you can normally combo, like, two colors together. Like in Elder Scrolls Legends, right. you can play two colors. So if, if you, it's not all, you're not all in on one one color. In Magic, you have pretty much no limitations, right, right? But obviously, it's better to just play a few colors. I mean, but... I mean it depends but, on the meta or the deck or the cards sure, that are available but, to you, but for the most part... There are no limitations, um, right? For them, it depends on the. Were there constraints? I mean, I not if you're trying yeah. to be. If they're trying to be competitive, the set will naturally will have limitations built in. Sure. You won't be able to put if a, if if one color was designed to be defensive, you can't put that with an aggressive um, mm -hmm. right color that came out in a, yeah. in a specific set. Um, if you want to talk about the statistics that these colors reflect or whatever, and Magic tournaments, big Magic tournaments, um, it's pretty rare outside of the times where they've actually had to take action um, with, with ones with Jason Mind Sculptor um, for decks to even come, uh, like in a single tournament, the, the deck would be like 30, if it was like 33%, they'd already be pretty worried. Um, but they only play one deck per, 
You can okay. only play one deck in a tournament, or, no, or I mean, what have you. Yeah, that's an interesting perspective. So your your thought, your point is basically that Hearthstone is a pretty balanced game right now in terms of the nine. Uh, yeah, and some, interestingly, just generally. Mm-hmm. they we have this. I think we have the same problem that Magic just had. They, for the first time in a long time, introduced a ban list into their standard format, and it was because of a card called Smuggler Copter. And Smuggler Copter is a good card. It goes in a lot of decks. <laughs> That's um, a funny name. That's cool. Yeah. It really is. <laughs> uh, uh, there's there's yeah. vehicles in Magic, and it's a vehicle, and you play a minion that can, uh, well, minion creature in that game can man the vehicle. Yeah. And the vehicle smugglers copter, but the, the Wait, smugglers can, copter. Can you literally have pirates riding parrots? Is that, is that a thing you can do? Uh, not parrots, but yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, to my point is that um, the card played differently in the decks that it was in, but it was in eighty percent of the decks. Right. Mm. Okay. So they were okay. like, "Well, you got to go, right. even though you play differently in this wide set of decks. Everyone feels like they have to run you, so you're gone." Well, patches and I think small time Buccaneers not really run very differently in every single deck right now, given given it's um, just you know in uh, the beginning well, there. But it's kind of an idea that you have to run it just to fend off the other decks. Yeah, it's and defensively I don't actually mind too, right? that you that it, like it, it, some people will be like, "Oh, it's bad that." Small time buccaneers and answer to small time buccaneer. But I, I personally don't care if, if I feel like the way that the cards interact with weapons and low mana spells actually creates interesting gameplay. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It doesn't bother me that I, that I'm kind of using the same thing to negate it if the rest of my deck is doing a different game plan. Yeah, um, I know. What but mean. I think that does bother the majority of players. So yeah. Okay, so are, are you pr- proposing that maybe a solution is to make some classes? Even stronger, like you know, they talked about Undertaker being the group, you know, the the highest winning percentage ever, right? At I think it was sixty percent. So yep. are, I mean, are you saying, you know, uh, proposing that they design something where a class gets to that point, or some a deck or two get to that point? <laughs> I don't think so, right? No. I mean, that's a bad environment too. So mm-hmm. um, I think I think again, just like more content is really more, really yeah. helpful, right? Because um rats talking about how quickly stuff gets figured out in hearthstone and that's truer now more than ever you know you can like rat rat made a joke a, a second ago like at the, the 53 percent win rate they don't say that's aggro shaman but it is aggro shaman. <laughs> yeah it might be i wonder what's the what's the percentage of jade shaman right now the jade shaman's probably quite high right now too right right yeah yeah, yeah. 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 And, yeah the J- so. jade shaman's the second most played deck on all right <laughs> but like as soon as Blizzard say this is the best deck, it has 53% win rate, then suddenly there's a sanctioned deck and it becomes this self-fulfilling prophecy where it becomes the dominant deck because Blizzard say it's the best deck and then they just keep goddamn playing. Well, right? it, or meta it's like the issue of, of, yeah. It's the issue of like as well, like big streamers actually dictate the meta to a certain extent. Like uh, if if you, someone watches like Ty's streamer deck and he climbs well with it, there is a good amount of people who will then go on ladder or... Yeah. You know, Tice will well, tweet it out, and then it will be on a website, and then yeah. suddenly everyone's playing that list for no reason other than Ty streamed it. Well, actually, then, so you chicken, know, makes an impact. Chicken and egg. What starts first? The meta report starts, or is it actually streamers that start start the trend? I I personally think that streamers have the biggest effect on the game, mm, okay. um, and in the meta to some extent. Uh, yeah, so the information is just so so readily available. As soon as they it turn is. the stream on, and there's a deck list on the screen. People will just turn the stream. Oh, mm-hmm. Tice is streaming. Click the Twitch. Look at the list. Hearthstone. Build the deck. Go. They'll, they'll literally not even see if it's good. They'll just be like, Oh, Tice is playing it. Sick. I'm gonna play it. And yeah. it's, that's one of the, like the great things about the game that you can do that. Uh, but it definitely, I think like any big streamer, because uh, you see it on ladder. As soon as you see a couple of cards played that are a bit different, you're like, Oh, Tice is list. Like straight away, you just know yeah. all the cards in the deck. Then. Yeah. And this and this is the environment. You know, I was talking to Rat a little bit about this last night. You know, this is a digital game age where we've got meta reports, we've got replays in other games, we've got you know the the information is fast. It's just widespread, and you know, for you know, Blizzard has to react to that. You know, Blizzard has to adapt to that. And I, I think it's also this, why the game's so popular, though. Is well, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, it's there's, literally there's, the success of the and, game. There's good and bad things, right? Mm. And it's, you really you don't think it's that, that you know. uh, I think that I mean personally I've played Cargus my whole life and I think they're just great. And I think this is the first yeah. time one was able to really break the you know, into uh, the nerds don't just play this 
um yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and i think that people really realize that um card games are just great there's an interview with richard garfield the guy who designs magic and he talks about how he was on uh, vacation with his family and at some falls um and he had and this is 1991 or whatever and he had this genius moment where he realized that you don't have to play card games and car in a card game not everyone has to play with the same cards like they do in 52 oh, wow. and then he's like yeah. then i realized i could cast a i could have different cards on my opponent and then we could play against each other and that's how i came up with magic and i think that honestly that concept is just like great to me like so. it's 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 all part of the same thing right like i agree like card games in general are an awesome concept and like Hearthstone was the first really successful one that broke through um but part of it breaking through like that is that suddenly the barrier for entry got yeah. removed from it. And then suddenly there's just, there's so much information everywhere. Cause at the time, well, I know nothing about magic, but sometimes I hear like a, a magic reference being made and I have to I go like, I, yeah, I, I just go and like try, try and look it up. And like finding information on magic is so much more difficult than finding information on Hearthstone. So yeah. the I, fact that it broke through and became so much more popular has created just this mass information that's I, everywhere. I think as well, like, Honestly speaking, and you know, I'm sure there'll be jokes from a couple of you at least instantly ready to aim at me here. But if when I was first learning the game, I'd played like a, a, the smallest bit of magic before Hearthstone, you know, popped around. If I had just played the game and tried to work it out by myself, like that would not be an enjoyable experience on ladder. Like I, I just know I would I would have got crushed again and again. And then all I would have to try and do is make lists. From players that crushed me and hope i knew what to do and that is a long arduous process and i'm pretty sure the player base would be not non-existent but tiny in comparison you know yeah. if we were in the the position we are now in terms of the technological age mm -hmm. uh, and, and how all that works i think it's great but it does i do believe that streamers just have the largest impact on the meta yeah uh, like it's so heavily and the decks don't even have to be good I think that's the scary bit. Like, yeah. The, yeah. You know, literally, like, like I said earlier, Tice could just close his eyes, put thirty cards in a deck, and then people would play it. Like, one hundred percent, people would be like, oh, it must be influencers. I mean, yeah. That's why they're called facts. influencers, man. Yeah, we have facts yeah. to back this up, and they don't just yeah. do dictate the decks that are being played, but how people feel about the decks, um, and how people people feel sure. about the meta in general. And we have stats to back up this type of thing, you know. In the Trinity series, when they did six zero with uh, Murloc. Paladin, you can open up the Legend Ladder stats and see like Murloc Paladin's play rate. <laughs> like, right. Like, you can see the blip where people mm -hmm. decided to um to play the deck. So. Yeah, I I think. Hey. It... Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say I think as well in terms of like the 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 meta overall, just like sort of carrying on the the initial question, I guess. Uh, is like I think one of the the real issues is that it's it's just like ladder just stuck. Uh, to a large extent like people just don't want to mindlessly queue all the time and that if they try and play a counter at the moment um you know so they say that shaman's like oh i'm ladder so they play the deck that beats it they log fibonacci's control warrior right and yeah. then they typically hit q and hit jade druid and then they're just like what the hell you know it is they just hit a hard counter and that seems to be like the rock paper scissors that's going around more or less it's a grind the there's moment. no there's no question uh, yeah. it's a grind and like, it's supposed to be a grind yeah it's, a, it's I mean, and that's, people that's thing. wanted rock paper scissors before now they have <laughs> oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And they don't yeah rock, exactly. Paper, scissors. exactly i mean like, people people just don't even know what they want again. and i don't even but, think it's rock paper scissors so that's like a yeah. whole other thing well um, yeah. so talking about ladder um uh, you know like after talking to some players i mean you know the competitive scene you know the actual events you know with bands and stuff the, the competitive scene actually the players like right now i mean it's yeah. like a completely different experience with that so when you're watching trinity you're watching all the you know just um HTT prelims coming up it's it's a going to be a completely different thing and the players feel differently about it it's really just ladder you know just just going out there and playing that same one deck over and over and over that i think this is where the this pit that we fall fall into and especially with the meta so um you know, with, with with the influence that you said, you know, like streamers have and, and whatnot, I mean, that's, you know, the honeymoon period for when a uh, expansion come out is like when the community is the most happy, you know, and it's it's when, you know, the reason why it's the most happy, guys, is because nothing is established as the best deck yet. 
So people, you know, get to experiment. Even if, you know, you're waiting just for your favorite streamer or your favorite, you know, the meta report to finally come out with the first, you know, like listing of the best uh, deck. During that period, you're probably even going to just experiment with this on stuff. And I feel like that in at least my experience with Hearthstone is probably like 40 to 50% of the enjoyment I get from Hearthstone, you know, and <clears throat> it would be great if they could just recreate that constantly. You know, for my, me, you know, I choose, and I, I mean, I choose my experience. So I, I, I just prolong that for months and months and months but your average hearthstone player doesn't right your average player hearthstone player that plays on the ladder wants to get to legend so they end up cheating you know in some right in some ways and they're like oh, i'm just tired i just want to look at the answer you know and they go to the, the meta report but if those answers just continually changed right i think it would just be healthier and people would just enjoy the game more because that's well, where a lot of the enjoyment in, in the beauty of hearthstone really is that would require some more active um, involvement from Blizzard. Like when I think about yeah. how long this Shaman deck's been good, it's only been two months for me. That's like, man, I've been playing games forever. Like two months is nothing. Like I don't mind the slightest. <laughs> but at the same time, the Agro Shaman deck that's used right now, I played that list already to on December 3rd. This like minus an Azure Drake. I was already, and actually some of the lists, I was playing the exact same list that people are bringing to prelims already three yeah. days into the expansion. Like this deck was found very quickly. And, um, that's something that I think that I'm uh, pretty good at though, is finding which deck list I can see on social media. I don't even try new decks when the expansion comes out, honestly, like try to make one myself. I don't think that's <laughs> worth it. I let everyone else do it. And then I just go on social media and I look at the different decks that people are playing. And then I look at it and I'm like, wow, this Shaman deck found a way to use the best Jade cards that came out and the best aggro cards that right. came out. Let me play this. I play it and I'm like, wow, this deck feels like it's doing things that are broken. And I did that in the format before when I played the okay. Mali Druid. When Frozen came out with Mali Druid with the Arcane Giants, like three days in, I was like, wow, this deck seems good. And then I'm telling people it's good. Then all of a sudden, like, <laughs> I get to rank one legend, I post a thing. Now, already five days into the expansion, everyone's playing the best deck. In Magic the Gathering, five days into the expansion, no one has even played a tournament usually yet. Because right. there's only you know a handful of yeah. tournaments per, per mm -hmm. month that are huge. So it's like... So they have it's to be reactive to crazy. that. You know, like yeah. they can't they can't be on a schedule like Magic. Like they have to understand. Okay, well, maybe I'm just throwing something. Out. I'm not saying it's like the best thing or anything, but maybe if a particular deck like like Agro Shaman dominates for just even a month, you know, that might just be okay. That's it. You know, like we don't want to have the same deck dominate for two months in a row. You know, so yeah. maybe we have to make a, a change here. And yeah, I get the whole thing about letting the the meta develop and letting you know just the creativity you know just giving it a chance right giving the meta like it to evolve itself but it evolves at lightning speed rates right now you know I, so even if we didn't give it the maximum amount of time i think even just cutting it 60 to 70 percent of the duration that it's needed is probably still better you know, like healthy I, I for think, the game i think what would be really nice is then you know we've gone like perfect world sort of discussion is that yeah. you know we we're talking earlier about say there's uh, you know a full expansion of tons of cards uh, every sort of HTT season, uh, and then halfway through those seasons, there's an adventure, which just puts in extra cards to like sort of shake up the season meta, so to speak. Like I think so that would months? be. So you mean every two months then? There's so, a, so like, two months so between say, those say, expansions. Say three months is yeah. a, a, a HTT season. Oh. Okay. Then okay. one one and a half months into that three month block, there's an adventure. So like you know. Mm. X amount of like cards. 50 cards that, or 60 cards. Or yeah, something. and then yeah. that's just like, well, you've got your sort of established meta for that first month, and then the cards sort of kick in halfway through the season and just shake things up. And even if, like, you know, Agro Shaman's still a deck, well, there might be some other cards that actually change other decks that then change how popular Agro Shaman is, for example. And it might, like, mm. it might just be enough to, like, change it up just a bit uh, to keep it sort of flowing as opposed to just. Well, there's three months, four months without an expansion. There you go. You know, in, well, in do general. they have enough content to, to yeah, do that? This, yeah, that's, that's, that's the question. Oh, I don't there's even a know. lot of logistical yeah. questions. Yeah, yeah and then yeah, this, this is what I'm saying, really like, just... perfect world. I think that would be, like, right. just enough to yeah. keep it well, ticking over. So well, even even go. just a balance patch, right? Yeah, like, we don't we don't need an expansion no, to be. Doesn't honest. even need like, to be like another. I mean, adventure, not an expansion, but... adventure. We don't need an adventure. Yeah, but I, I think to. like six 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 to eight weeks is like a good number to come in and do something because, yeah. like, I agree with Rat. I think like the best one to two decks are figured out at least like twenty eight out of thirty cards within two or three days. Usually, I think you know the the community is that large. 
and the hive mind is is powerful enough to be able to do that very very quickly mm -hmm. but in terms of like getting a full fleshed out like tier one and tier two i think that usually takes around six to eight weeks for everyone to like fully establish which are the the playable decks which is basically like tier two bit of the cutoff like that's about where playable ends in terms of like being able to get high legend finishes play them in tournaments etc i think that usually takes a little bit longer so mixing that up in some way every every six to eight weeks or so does sound like a good number to me but yeah yeah the, the concern of like having to pump out an entire like story and narrative and art design and everything for like a new adventure that's where a lot that's of the loud. work it, I'll it change goes what in I mean. I'll yeah. change what i mean they could release a pack bundle there you where go. you spend there you twenty dollars okay. and there's fifty cards. Okay. I don't care there about you go. the story. Yeah. Here's the thing. A, we don't know how that affects their money and and intake. Um they also like to make things ahead of time. Like they're working on the set a year from now, a year like now or whatever. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure they move mm -hmm. cards occasionally. Um Yu Gi Oh had yep. a lot of different ways to release cards and they had various effects on the uh the meta and when subtle says that it's discovered six to eight weeks and then the rest is flushed out that's not always necessarily the case the jade shaman just came into popularity and when blizzard brings up the point of um fibonacci's warrior deck it isn't to say like raven said that you're just going to beat everybody and climb to the top with this fibonacci warrior deck um even though the number one ranked guy in legend right now i don't know is a uh, fibonacci warrior um <laughs> it's it's to point out the idea that there is innovation to be done and there are things that are people are trying and then people will yeah. say oh well that's fibonacci is just one person and it's anecdotal but the reality is is counter meta or counter counter yeah. the meta is always going to be anecdotal because if it wasn't then it would be the meta you know right, right. So you're always exactly. going to have small sample size when you're working with this and i think that was blizzard just showing that there's innovation to be made that people aren't doing and i think that's what the jade mid-range shaman kind of shows everyone was so busy playing the aggro shaman that it took them a while to realize that the Jade Mid Shaman was even a thing that you could be doing. It was there forever. I mean, we talked about the Jade Shaman, you know, Pirate Jade Shaman very early on, even on this show. So um, it's just been there, but it's just been under the covers. Maybe wasn't refined, maybe three or four cards or something like that, but it's always just been there. But like you said, it, it's, it just moves in waves because there's not very many in innovators out there and then it's a matter of those innovators being influential people or getting it to influential people and then it becomes like a thing well yeah. the jade mid shaman is actually quite interesting because there, you have players who only play shaman like loyan i don't know if you know who that is you yeah, only put shaman he was played mid shaman right off the bat but it took life coach to sit down and be like why am i playing tunnel trog and totem golem in yeah. my shaman deck <laughs> <laughs> for the new jade mid shaman to show up and, yeah. and realize that we don't even need those cards it's, in fact it's better without those cards yeah so i i think that there is innovation to be had but the reality is and i think that this is the same thing with, when i say the meta is fine if people aren't having fun or the innovation isn't being found out because of the way streaming meta reports etc work then you need to work around the new reality that you live in the reality that the innovations just aren't going to be made even yeah. if they are there yeah. and the reality that even if the game is balanced statistically people aren't having fun and you need to yeah. cater to that and start changing how you're releasing cards or balance patches or what have you yeah that's what the issue is right because you know the, the innovation is there or, or the opportunity for it but for 99 percent, maybe even more of the player base why why will they bother like someone's just told them this is the best deck and they want to win games of hearthstone so why, why spend time even thinking about something else when you've just mm -hmm. been told what to play to win it's like and that like you know i, I agree i think like that's unfortunately the, the reality we live in at the moment and the way that the game is set up even incentivizes this further with ladder being played how it's played you know only lasting a month um favoring faster decks this type of thing like it it pushes people to even further get um, kind of um, grounded in that mindset where they want to play the best deck and they want to climb the ladder now and they want to win and they want to be the best. So, yeah, I agree totally. Um, well, why don't we move on to the last point just with the post? We spent like an hour on this already. Uh, but <laughs> the last point is something um, I think some some folks may not have been uh, emphasizing or just pointing out or not getting enough attention which is Ben does mention that they are working on um, a solution, at least from the standpoint of the client, to be able to stream balance patches without actually going through the App Store approval processes. 
And for me, you know, being a mobile software developer before, that's that's a huge thing, guys. I mean, th this is like, you know, getting the plumbing ready for all the things that we want, which is more frequent type of balance changes. So, um, yeah, this is something that shouldn't be underestimated or, or, or really this is like the biggest part of the new, this post in my eyes. And um, it will probably reduce the... Um, I would say reduce the, the, the cycle for the product release cycle by at least two weeks because it usually takes about that long to actually get approval. And then, yeah. you know, if you make like a small mistake, which they probably don't at this point, given they've had so many updates and stuff at this point. But if you make a small mistake, you have to start over again, which really, really sucks. You know, if it's just some little human error, like in the filling out of forms and, you know, like online forms and, and, and maybe even config files, then you have to start over again. And they don't even tell you like, you know, if you've done something wrong to begin with. So um, at the very least, it's going to be a two week reduction, but it could potentially be more, you know, just with some maybe some other internal things. So what we're talking about, guys, is they'll be able to change probably like card stats and and, um, you know, if they want to nerf something, they could probably change it on the server and it'll just automatically update your clients. And one thing that I want you guys to understand, too, is that it's they didn't do it before or maybe because of, I don't know, some kind of maybe just the code that they had originally, but it's also very risky to do those type of things because if you screw up something and it just totally messes up every single client out there, like the game is just boned on everybody's phones and then they have to get updated, you know, for them to actually have the fix. That is like worst case scenario for any kind of mobile product. So I, I can understand why they were, you know, very, very, um, or they're very cautious about trying to figure out how to do it like right. So, um, yeah, I want to get your thoughts. So what, what do you guys think? I mean, it's not much to talk about there, but you guys excited well, about it? I, I think it's really good because um, from talking to a, a lot of people on Team 5, like one of the things that like, they complain about it, you know, they're like, what? so, you know, back when the uh, the Yugs are on patch sort of nerf section, yeah. like, we, 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 I remember speaking to him, you know, so was there as well, we were talking to him about, like, you know, potential nerfs coming up. And at one point it was like, oh, so, you know, like, when and they're like oh we, well we don't know because <laughs> we have to we, we, we have to be yeah. told we can send it out because of the mobile app it's the same yeah. with expansions people ask why they can't well why can't you just tell us the day the expansion's coming out because they're like oh we're not sure ourselves <laughs> and they don't have control over that and right. um obviously it's still different for expansions because it's like actual new content as opposed to just uh alterations mm -hmm. but um but yeah like i, I just think it's important that you know i think uh, people in general are very quick to like complain about Blizzard and don't understand like they have things that frustrate them that frustrate us. Yeah, that well, they cannot control. Like you know, technical well, Blizzard talk could have came on and, and talked about this. They could have released a post, That's true. you know, and and gave people the idea. Well, like when could. it comes to uh, Magic the Gathering, we understand the complications of printing physical cards and sending them out because that's something that's very tangible and it's very obvious to us. We know how printers work. We know how shipping stuff works. We understand this, yeah. but a lot of people in reality don't know how mobile code works or how code in general works. Yeah. And yeah. I personally don't. And I've brought it up a few times that I know that this is something that people think is a limitation that, that work on Hearthstone, but I don't know anything about it. And then right. it takes someone that knows something like Chan Man, for instance, to tell us, oh, well, you have to get approval process and yeah. like i had no clue that that was a thing that you had to do but if yeah. i knew it then maybe i'd be more um you know sympathetic or what, yeah. what have you towards the cause i mean i mean i only knew because they told me you know they, they, they were complaining about it that's the only reason i knew it was a yeah. thing i didn't even didn't even cross my mind that they have to get like some form of approval yeah to send them just thought they were just from a, a different company like yeah exactly Blizzard has a billion pressed, dollars. i just thought they just pressed the button they press the button like, it just goes out done. there yeah i wish it was that easy that's Holy how it works right? when you have a, when you're a million multi-million dollar, million dollar <laughs> exactly. company right you just you just have so much exactly. money that when you hit things stuff just automatically happens you, you've yeah. got that I mean, one guy that's all he's doing it? is waiting for you to say okay just roll out those balance sheets. Just yeah one, yeah the, the keyboard is just one big red button and they're like <laughs> no. i think like i've i've seen people like complain about this this is a greater point that like so many things the excuse is all but the mobile client um that like they like mm -hmm. blizzard have to pay so much attention to this be it with like the limitations of the mobile app store and what that means yeah. for like rolling out content and also just like ui decisions like sometimes mm -hmm. like deck slots for example one of the excuses for like when they said they were doing it one of the reasons they then said why it was taking so long is how they were working it into the mobile client etc 
and people are like oh this this goddamn mobile client that i hate because it takes up like 1.8 gigabyte of space on my phone and i never use it because i'm a hardcore player that like plays on my laptop or my pc all the time and this is like a greater point with the community well like the vocal people who are um like vocal on reddit vocal on twitter the people who are on this show for a start but even the people that watch this show are like 0.01 percent of the hearthstone community yeah. at best and that mobile client that is a huge reason why any of us have a goddamn job without yeah. that we do not so if you for one second think that like paying attention to that mobile client is of detriment to Hearthstone as a whole, you are a moron and should stop talking because Blizzard that could. thing is just keeping us all employed. Blizzard could help us understand that, though. They could tell us the percentage of players that play on mobile. Probably I don't know how not much in the is. words that I just used. Yeah, 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 yeah but they have to, they, they could be more I, transparent about that. It off okay. before I, I, I think, that, I like, think one third play have only played on their phone. Like, and it's crazy. I think one of the problems is it, I, it would it would sound weird because it's what we we discussed last time I was on here, Chan Man, about how important the mobile client is to, to the game of and the game's success. Is that if Blizzard released a post saying, "Look, guys, the only reason this is as, anywhere close to as big as it is is because of the mobile client." So, again, not in these words, but so stop moaning about it, basically. Um, it, it, Ooh, it would be that, weird. That was, that was just, scary, Raven. Well, 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 no, I mean, like, Blizzard aren't going to say that. It could just fuck be the percentage of players. <laughs> it could just be the percentage of players who only have played on the mobile, like. Right. Um, yeah, exactly. That, sure, it, sure. Just but, facts you know, to help you put it in perspective. I, yeah. it, it would help reasonable human beings, but then there's, like, 99% of the world. Yeah that it wouldn't help well i mean let, yeah. let's be let's be honest about it like yes like large part of why hearthstone is as successful as it is uh, is because it's available on mobile but at the same time it is limited from design standpoint because of mobile yeah. too and so yeah. we, we, we're not going to say that oh no you guys are just dumb because that no it, it, you know, there is limitations and there are some you know critiques that that you know People are, of course, have every right to you know talk about and why it moves something you know so maybe slower than than a different type of card game, um, but that's just the reality, guys. Like we have to kind of accept that fact. I mean, can they still do like balance changes? I mean, these some of the balance changes we're talking about has nothing to do with the UI, you know, like um, and those things can still be done yeah, even on a mobile environment. I mean, the reality so is they have to figure out ways to do it. Yeah. Otherwise, they won't have any players left because even though we yeah. are the small percentage, influencers still have a huge outreach and the reality is is mobile game players for the most part only mobile game players are I, I would consider them quite fickle you know there's a lot of mobile games that come out and they switch between and they spend a lot of money on all these mobile games but the reality is when they start becoming discontent with hearthstone uh they might even look to like are other people who are playing this game discontent with it like let me go find out and if you have all these influencers <laughs> from the top saying that people are discontent then it goes yeah. all the way down and even if I'm a pro and I tell my friend who plays somewhat competitively, then he tells his friend who plays, who only plays on the mobile at work. And then his coworker is, is the guy who's only ever played mobile games. Like it still hits him, honestly, it really does. And, yeah. and he's actually even more likely to go find out if people think the game is bad, if he feels like the experience he's having is bad. So. Yeah, I, I understand that. Yeah, they have to, it's a PR thing too, right? And they have to figure out how to like, actually control that and, and maintain it. But, you know, I think there is some transparency that they could share with us that would placate at least a percentage of the, the vocal minority. I'm not necessarily us here, but I'm just saying just the vocal minority that, that you know, it doesn't understand the process at all, like you guys were saying. Um, but anyways, we've spent an hour, over an hour on this topic, so I, I think we should probably move on. But before we do, I do want to give a quick shout out to some of our patrons that are supporting Value Town. Value Town is 100% supported by the, our Patreon, which is at Value Town, uh, oh, actually patreon.com slash Value Town. So if you guys want to become a supporter of the show, you can go do that. Um, but I do want to give a shout out to some of our you know, just supporters right now, our big legendary producers, Mike T, L, Louis G, Dean P, and a few others, Raydan, Davin P, Havoc, Bruce W, Joel A, Jonathan V, Elwood P, and Jake L. Thank you so much, guys, for doing it. I mean, you guys literally are the reason why this show happens. And, uh, you know, we're very, very appreciative of you every single time. And so appreciative that we've met our milestone milestone again. So you guys know what time it is. It's time for us to give you our best smile for 
I've been kind of varying it from 20 to 30 seconds, but we're going to just stick with the 20 seconds, at least for now. It's for so. Saddle. Yes, for Saddle. Yeah. Here we go. For right. Saddle's sanity. All right, here we go. 20 seconds starting now. <laughs> Saddle's face is scaring me. <laughs> just, just never said this before. Okay. All right, we got right. it. Twenty seconds right there. <laughs> oh my God. How long twenty oh, seconds oh. lasts, isn't it? I, oh man. I feel like I reached my smile quota. Smile <laughs> quota. See, that's what we're doing. We're just bringing. You know, the patrons are are bringing just uh, you know a little bit of a little bit of joy to the world for at least twenty seconds. At least to the Hearthstone world for twenty seconds. Um, but anyways, thanks again to the patrons. You guys are awesome. Okay.